What does it feel like when someone squeezes your balls? I have never had anybody <laughs> squeeze my <laughs> balls. <laughs> if someone were to. I would imagine it's not great. <laughs> you want to find out? <laughs> Don't do my sound. I did the sound this week. <laughs> Welcome to episode six. It was kind of rude of you not to introduce our guest though. Who's that? This giant ass pimple on the side of my face. <laughs> Do you want to tell people that? They're going to see it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're back again. Today we're doing something a little bit different though. Mm -hmm. We're going to go with current events. Yep. A lot of shit's been going on. Too much. Shit. And we got something to say about it. I always got something to say. You definitely. All you have to do is listen. That's not hard. <laughs> but uh, before we get started, we just want to make sure that if you do enjoy what you're seeing or what you're listening to, please, please, please take the time to give us a like or give us a five-star review on any of the podcast streaming platforms. Subscribe. Hit that notify. Do all the things. Everything. It helps us. Yes. Let us help you. Don't. You're stealing <laughs> everything I say plagiarism no i'm the original one in this relationship <laughs> this last weekend for all of us golf fans it was a perfect weekend what was that we had the masters sorry i fell asleep for a second you don't like golf no it's boring you like mini golf don't come for putt putt like that it's a totally different sport it's an easier sport it's far more entertaining. I didn't see anybody shooting through windmills and over ponds. So the windmills and the ponds, that's more difficult than real golf. More fun. Would you watch a mini golf masters? Yes, I would. I would you're participate in one. Uh, you're not good though. <laughs> Don't lie. <laughs> so, but as I was watching the masters this last weekend, a question ran through my head. Why am I watching the Masters? Wrong. Hmm. What is the female equivalent of the Masters? Or like, is there one? Like an event that we get excited about? Yeah, something of equivalent fandom. I mean, I would get pretty excited about a wedding if it was going to happen. Hmm. I would probably go to like some wedding conventions, get some free stuff, all the cake tastings. I'm pretty excited about all that. I just don't have the golden ticket yet. How does every question that I ask somehow get back to a proposal, a wedding, an engagement, et cetera, et cetera? I'm a master at my craft. I see. Mm -hmm. But if you were truly a master at your craft, wouldn't you have a ring? Don't be that person. <laughs> Pushing them buttons, aren't I? Mm -hmm. Don't act like I don't have a say in this. Don't act like we haven't talked about this. You propose when I say you can propose. <laughs> what when it wouldn't completely bankrupt us oh gosh okay so never <laughs> so is that all you got for an answer the proposal that's your mm -hmm. equivalent to the masters i mean i can find entertaining stuff about all the things that you watch sports wise okay elaborate so like if i were to go to the masters mm -hmm. i wouldn't be there for the golf i would be there for the golf carts I would be there for the drink carts. I would be there for the cute outfits. I get to be outside. I don't like that they try and silence me. Don't let me clap or cheer when I want to. They need to concentrate. They're the only sport that needs to concentrate? No. You can make all the noise you want at a baseball game, a basketball game. We've touched this before. It's a gentleman's sport. You have to stay silent. That sounds like I'm going to like a gentleman's club, which has a whole different meaning. Okay. <laughs> we have gone into left field now. Let's, let's bring it back. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Why are you so excited about the minor parts of a major event? If we're watching the Super Bowl, why are you so excited about the halftime show? That's the good part. If we go to a horse race... If we watch the Kentucky Derby, why are you so fascinated with the hats? I'm there for the good part and to see the pretty horses. 
if we go to a game, mm -hmm. why are you so hype about the participation that they, the participation shit that they do in the midst of everything? I like to dance. I like to cheer. I like to eat food. I like to have fun. I'm not there for the sports. You're there for the sports. <laughs> so the admission price, you're willing to pay that for some participation. For fun. I make things fun. You're uh, fun by association. Mm. Mm -hmm. Being associated to you. Right, obviously. Okay. Yeah. All right, well. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You said you're welcome before I said thank you, though. It's free. You don't have to pay for that. You, you get that for free just by being with me. Oh. It's a perk. Many of those, right? Yeah. Mm. I just bring the joy to your life. That's my job. I'm like, you know the movie Inside Out? Mm. I am Joy, the green character. Anybody who self-identifies as Joy, do you think it, they're Joy? Yeah, I know who I am. Uh. You would be maybe like the green character or the, the blue character. No, you'd be the red character, the angry guy. <laughs> Just letting you guys into why we're not engaged yet. Stop doing that. People <laughs> are believing you. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Who won the Masters? <clears throat> I don't know. Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods is done. As sad as it is to say. Is my it, twin. Is it sad? Huh? Is it sad? Do we like Tiger? I like Tiger. I don't agree with everything Tiger, but as a golfer? Mm. I don't know. You cheat on your wife. You're done with me. Let's move on to Coachella. Mm. We've seen the videos roll out. Looks like fun. Looks mm -hmm. like chaos. Looks what like are your thoughts? It looked like fun. I saw a video of uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Not that I'm a Swifty or anything, but they look like they were having a good time. Okay, and I saw that video because you showed me it. Right, I show you all the videos I watch. <laughs> you do, but I, I had a thought. Mm -hmm. They looked like they were in a very controlled environment at the front. Mm -hmm. The rest of the crowd that I've seen is anything but controlled. Mm. You're getting smacked. You're getting leaned on. You're getting pushed into the, the people in front of you. Yeah. Mosh pits. Uh -huh. So what you're saying is that if we want to go to festivals, we need people to give us like VIP seats. Who the hell is going to give us a VIP seat? I don't know. Anybody out there? Any, take, <laughs> any takers? <laughs> Looking for Lollapalooza 2024. <laughs> Here's my thing, though. We are approaching our 30s. Or, let me speak for myself. I am approaching my 30s. You didn't need to fix it. You're 30. You didn't need to fix it. As a 30-year-old going to Coachella, not 30. do you have the same concerns as you would at a younger age? Because I think about it in a more pragmatic way, I feel like. Now. Mm. I mean, to be fair, my body has been slowly decaying since I was like 18 years old. So I think there are some concerns I probably still would have had. But yeah, I am concerned how my stamina will be able to keep up with that. That's your only concern? Well, no, I'm also concerned about being able to see over people, but that's what you're there for. You want to be on my shoulders the entire time? I mean, while we're watching performers, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to have a great time, I guess. <laughs> you will. Here's my other thing. Would you want to be in the front of the crowd, in the middle of the crowd, or in the back of the crowd? Do I have Taylor Swift status or am I an, a normal person? Normal person. Oh, okay. N none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you watching? I don't know. <laughs> I guess if I have to choose between those, the back, but is that worth it? You don't see much, but they do have screens. Mm -hmm. But then if you're watching a screen, you might as well just be at home. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, this is where we differ. So in the back, even if you're, let's say at a concert, any other concert, you're in the nosebleeds. You're just seeing the screens and the person that you're there to watch looks like an ant. No, that's apples to oranges. You can't compare the two. Festival is like, I get to be outside. Everybody's like hype, having fun, dancing. I'm feeding off of that energy, having a good time. But you would be able to feed off the energy in an arena as well. The only difference is that you wouldn't be outside. I'm inside, I'm inside confined to like one little seat section. I'm outside at a festival. I can be doing cartwheels and shit. Not that I would. I would probably break something. But taking up all the space, having a grand old time. Mm. I'm going to get one of those 
really big drinks, you know, that have like the, the real cool cups. It was random, but <laughs> thank you for informing us. Sorry, I just took you wherever my brain was going. <laughs> you didn't want to join on that ride. Here's my other thought. Okay. What would be your outfit? Mm. Because if you, if you wear anything normal, mm-hmm. nothing screams I'm 30 more than a normal outfit. Okay. Um, I've thought about this. I've taken notes from the observation. <laughs> the observations that I've made over previous years, because we do live downtown, we see a lot of Lala Palusers. I've determined. <laughs> <laughs> that was not an endearing term. Lala Palusers. I didn't think about it beforehand. <laughs> it just came out. Um. I've determined that the way to go is dressed how you would envision an alien dresses. So like bright, shiny, aluminum looking spandex outfits. Then like your hair in two alien buns. Glitter sparkle everywhere. Neon colors. For guys, I think we have it easy. Everybody just wears jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. I have plenty of those. I think for a girl, I could wear an oversized jersey as like a dress with some some dunks. I think I would fit in. Mm. I'd be more comfortable. No? No. <laughs> I can't even picture that on you. I can. It looks good. Looks good. <laughs> okay. Do you own any of those items? You do. That's what I have you for. I don't have dunks. Oh. Well, give me some. <laughs> My main problem with Coachella's the Lollapaloozas, any of the festivals, you look at the lineup for each day and you identify maybe two or three artists from every single day that you actually are there for. Mm -hmm. And then there's just a bunch of random people that you don't even have any interest in listening to. True. How is this worth it? Fun. Is that how you justify any cost? Yeah, pretty much. Mm. I can make anything a good time. I mean, look at me. Can I sell you some snake oil? What? I have some snake oil I want to sell you. I'm confused. You're not familiar with this? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a saying. It's basically saying that if you are easy to sell mm. to, mm. if you justify purchases of high costs, for illegitimate reasons, Mm -hmm. then I have something that doesn't exist to sell you. Mm. Snake oil. That's not an experience. Doesn't count. I I, I just hope (laughs) everybody out there feels the same confusion that I feel right now because this is a daily occurrence. No, it makes sense up here. I'll sit here just looking at you sometimes and I'm like, what goes on up there? It's a lot. There's uh. usually always music playing somewhere in the background. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we've done plenty of talking about impractical purchases. Mm-hmm. Let's go to necessary expenditures now. Mm. Happy tax week for everybody out there who celebrates. It's not happy. For some, it is. No, even if you get a return, it's not happy. Why? The IRS pisses me off. Explain. They know exactly how much I owe, right? <laughs> Down to the cent. And yet they want me... To go through this entire tax code, basically, and figure out all the things that apply to me, and then do it, and then I still probably get it wrong. Gotta have a good accountant. Why don't you just send me the bill? That would be easier, but that would require a lot of investment into the IRS. No, see, that, I think that's a trap. I think that's what they tell us. But you have enough people that can fact check them, but you don't have enough people that can fact check them before they send them out? Have you ever tried to call them? If you have, you know they're understaffed. You will never get through. Aren't we there with like AI yet? Can't it figure it out? Can't they like create an algorithm that knows how much I owe and then send me the bill? (laughs) Another moment. (laughs) Another Cody moment. I just feel like I shouldn't be giving this away for free. Like my brain is so fun to be in. Mm. I should be charging admission. (laughs) Okay. All right. Well, I don't know what to say to that, but I hope you have more. Actually, I'm going to start taxing you to like be in my presence to enjoy. It's like an entertainment tax. (laughs) Anything else? 
I mean, now that you mention it, I feel like every time that you mess with me when I'm, when I'm on my period, you should get taxed for that. Mm. Mm-hmm. Actually, me just being on my period, you should have to pay an equivalent tax to make up for all the stuff that you don't have to pay for, like tampons, pads, mydol, all that shit. You should get taxed. I feel like I buy that more than you do. Okay. <laughs> you should. <laughs> so i have to have another tax no that's what it should be that's see good idea the men should have to pay for the women products because they don't have to experience any of it and we do so you guys should pay for it and then we get it for free even though we have nothing to do with it you have everything to do with it do i am i bleeding yeah exactly that's my point you don't have to suffer. You should have to suffer somehow in an equivalent rate. So mm. I'm going to hit your pocket where it hurts while my coochie is hit where, it's hurt, where it hurts. <laughs> I'm going to bleed your wallet dry while I am bled dry. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to give you the floor. You got anything else? I'm on a roll today. <laughs> Are you having as much fun as I am? <laughs> I wish I could say I am, but I'm not. Okay, well, sucks for you. <laughs> what well, else? What would you tax for? If I could impose a tax to get 10% of every Amazon purchase that you make, I would be a millionaire. You don't get enjoyment from my Amazon packages? Rarely. It's a bunch of shit that doesn't pertain to me at all. How so? Makeup products. I'm making myself beautiful for you. <laughs> I don't like makeup. You should. I look like a troll without it. <laughs> okay, what about organizational things? Hello, that is a universe, universal benefit for everybody in our household. Mm. What about hair ties? You complain about my hair being everywhere. I'm tying it up for you. There is one. That I appreciate that you do. Mm-hmm. You just got a 10-pack of mints. Now, that's a good one. And it's a very necessary one. For you. The air is breathable now for me. Because you're not being suffocated by your own breath, correct? Ah. Mm-hmm. That's why I got them. I didn't get them for me. I got them for you. Which leads me to my next tax. Anytime you eat garlic or onions... I need five slaps in a tax. Okay, ditto for every time you eat broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Stick up the whole apartment. We'll be publishing this podcast on Wednesday, but Monday of this week, we will have the WNBA draft. And we already know who's going number one. Caitlin Clark. Is Angel Reese going to be there too? She'll be in the top five. Okay, good. But that leads me to a question. And obviously we've seen an abundance of popularity come into the women's game. We just saw a women's championship where they had more viewership than the men's championship this year. Why do you think that is? I mean, I was going to ask you that question because don't come for me, all right? I shamefully admit this. Up until this year, I didn't know a single women's basketball college name. Hmm. Maya Moore? It sounds familiar, but if you put me on the spot and asked me for a player's name, it wouldn't come to me. Brianna Stewart? Sounds familiar. (laughs) They're going to revoke my women's card for this. What do you think, though? Here's my thing. There's a lot of differences in the women's game that I think lend you to be a fan of a team or a player in a much more fanatic way. Mm -hmm. First off, let's talk about the NIL. That's been a very controversial addition to the game. Players are getting paid now. They're getting sponsorships. But there's a subtle difference, in my opinion, between the men's side and the women's side. Men, they have the incentive of going to the NBA Mm -hmm. and gaining more salary, more opportunity from leaving college and going there. Mm -hmm. Not only that, they only have to do one year to be eligible for the NBA draft. On the women's side, they have three years that they have to complete before they go to the WNBA. And not only that, a player like Caitlin Clark, who's been making millions – as a a collegiate athlete at Iowa, will get a pay decrease as she goes into the WNBA. How does that make sense? 
Their salaries are nothing. I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty wild. But I mean, I did just see her in a, a State Farm ad. So I guess she's not doing too bad. <laughs> and maybe that's part of it too. I guess I've seen them more than I usually did. You know, a lot of the WNBA players, they have to go overseas in the off season just to make more money. That's whack. Yeah. Totally different. But the other thing with the NIL and how the men's game is managed, a lot of the roster from year to year now on the college basketball teams, they have very little carryover. Mm -hmm. So if you're a fan of the team, you may latch on to a player one year, and that player may transfer out the next year. Mm -hmm. When the roster has so much turnover, it's hard to get invested into a particular player particular you feel less invested into the team as a whole I think that plays a factor at least for me I'm a Texas basketball fan I've seen the roster turnover so many times by this point I don't feel as invested as into the individual players because I know there's a whole another roster coming next year so the fact that the women have to stay there for three years makes you more invested because you know Caitlin Clark is going to be at Iowa for at least three years exactly like you mm. you you set down roots in a certain players. Like, for example, back in the day when we had the 2016 Cubs and that whole team leading into it, yeah. how did you feel about the team? I love that team. I miss Rizzo. Come <laughs> back. And that's the thing. In the last few years, we've been turning the roster over. You have no idea who's even on the team anymore. Mm -hmm. I guess that's part of it, too. This might be my TikTok bias coming through, but I feel like I – like, the women's basketball players are being put in front of me more, mm -hmm. like – I'm seeing videos about the Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark beef, and I'm seeing Paige Beckers give her really awesome acceptance speech, and that made me more, more invested in her, and I don't know, I felt like I actually knew the players when I'm watching it. That's a good point. And I would say the marketing side of that, I think that's the Caitlin Clark effect. Mm. Because as she began to, to become a superstar, as she showed how unique her talent was, the more coverage that those games got. Mm -hmm. And as you delve into that game a little bit more, you see, oh, there are other stars. There's a Juju Watkins. There's a, an Angel Reese. There's a, a whole team in South Carolina of a bunch of talented players. Like, mm -hmm. I have a question for you. How do you feel like one becomes a fan of a player, a team, or anything? I don't know. Familiarity? They're being put in front of your face a lot. I think that definitely plays a role, but to me, it's not really what they do on the court mm. or on the field or whatever sport they play. It's that you learn who they are as people mm -hmm. and you see them off the court, how they interact with their family, some of their beliefs, how they align with us. Mm -hmm. And the people that do align with us or that we think favorably of, it's easier to root for them in their sport. You have rooting interest now because you identify with the person, not just the athlete. Yeah, and I think even if you don't necessarily like who they are as a person, it like shows you the personalities that are going to be on the court. So like, if I know if there's beef between two players, that's entertainment. That makes me want to watch the beef come through when they're playing on the court. So I get what you're saying. It's like you, you, you see glimpses of them off the court, and now you're entertained to watch them on the court. Especially for you, you're a reality TV fan. So. I like the drama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you like drama so much? I don't know. Maybe because I don't have drama in my life. Like my, <laughs> <laughs> my life's pretty even keel, you know? Mm. Status quo. So what about this one? Because I've heard a lot of conversation about this as well. And I want to get your, your thoughts on it. The men's game versus the women's game. For example, we have the NBA playoffs coming up. Mm -hmm. We have the WNBA season coming up. Mm -hmm. Are you equally excited to watch those? I feel like, and again, don't come for me. I feel like I have my own personal out here. I love my sister, don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but she played women ba women's basketball growing up. And I was forced to go to so many basketball tournaments, so many basketball games... She even played through college, so then I had to go to those games as well. I was so burnt out on women's basketball by the time she was done that I swore I would never watch another women's basketball game. But I am getting more interested in it. Like you said, I think I, I like the players now, and I 
I'm getting a little more invested again. So the common things that you hear, the men's game, it's more athletic. You see dunks. Mm -hmm. The players are faster. Mm -hmm. Mostly athleticism things, things that can't be biologically equivalent. But there, as I've been watching more of the women's game, I've found some things that I appreciate from their side of the game more than I actually appreciate from the men's game. When you strip the athleticism from the game, there's so much that you have to make up for cognitively and fundamentally. You say women aren't athletic? I mean, less athletic. <laughs> you got to catch <laughs> for that. <laughs> the average woman, less athletic than the average man. It's, bio it's biology. Mm -hmm. All right. I think you guys are smarter on average. Made up for it a little bit. <laughs> I was going to ask you, though, do you think the talent level in women's college basketball has gotten better? Because I feel like when I was watching the women's tournament, it looked a lot better. And then when I was watching the men's tournament, I'm not going to lie, I didn't like what I was seeing. It looked sloppy, a lot of missed baskets. I don't know. I don't think the talent's any different, aside from Caitlin Clark. <laughs> but – it just has more eyeballs now. So you're finding players that you would have never found in the past. You, you've had Maya Moores in the, in the past. Mm -hmm. And they weren't covered to the level of Caitlin Clark, but they were the best in their sport and best of their generation. Um, That's fair. I will say, with the tournament this year, I thought it was pretty boring, the men's tournament. Yeah. Not as many upsets outside of NC State making their Final Four run. A 1-1 championship – but a blowout because yeah. UConn, you, I'm sorry, you have too much talent. <laughs> you are blowing people out. You need to break your shit up. Get rid of some people. <laughs> Give everybody else a chance. Yeah. No, there was one thing you did like about this year's tournament, isn't there, though? Mm -hmm. As you can see with my shirt, mm -hmm. for my audio listeners out there, I have a shirt that says Bracket Boss. You know why? I just won our family bracket group for the fourth year in a row. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll let you have boss with that because you're not the boss. <laughs> Speaking of current events, I'm going to bring this inside to the current event of our world right now. Oh, gosh. It's Shark Week. Ooh, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, ha, ha. What was that? <laughs> you know, in Finding Nemo when they're like, shark bait. Ooh, ha, ha. Same thing. Shark Week. Mm, Ooh, ha, ha. Forgot about that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> it's Shark Week. So we're going to talk about the period. I don't know why I said it that way. All things, period, we're going to talk about. I think that there is like an extreme lack of understanding for like the women's cycle altogether. When it comes to men, society, it's just made into this taboo thing that we're not supposed to talk about. I think it's true. And I'm recently learning because you have forced me to. <laughs> but no, it's good information to have. Um, I'm learning that some weeks you have energy. Mm -hmm. Some weeks you don't have energy. Mm -hmm. Some weeks you are moody and it's for a biological reason. Yeah, I cannot help it. It has you have no control over it. No. Progesterone is your enemy. I'm not a fan. Get that <laughs> shit out of my body. But it's true. I even am just learning some of these things. Like I never knew that the men's cycle resets every 24 hours and that's why you guys are pretty even keel, status quo. Whereas women we go through four different phases and they're all so different hormonally. It, we say it's a roller coaster, but it's legitimately a roller coaster. It's fair. And you're not giving yourself enough credit. You're acting like I'm forcing you to do things, but I'm about <laughs> to out you right now. I'm going to show you how much of a simp you are no, in the best boy. way possible. This man right here downloaded an app called Flow where I can share information with him and he'll know what to expect from me hormonally that week. Things he can do to help, things he can learn about it. I'm gonna run you your props. It's better than the alternative. <laughs> Getting slapped and not knowing why. I don't slap you. At least I know why now. Okay, keep fronting like I can slap <laughs> you and I'm gonna actually slap you. <laughs> but I mean, it's just so important to understand that. Let, let, let me just draw you a picture here. What's it, what does it feel like when someone squeezes your balls? <laughs> this sounds like an inappropriate question. 
Let's answer the question. What does it feel like if someone were to squeeze your balls? I have never had anybody <laughs> squeeze my <laughs> balls. <laughs> if someone were to. I, I would imagine it's not great. <laughs> they want to find out? <laughs> no, not particularly. Okay, what I imagine is that it would make your whole stomach churn and feel uncomfortable, and it would feel like you almost can't breathe at certain points. That's what women go through every single month for a week from the ages 18 to like 50. And then at 50, you go through menopause, and that's a whole bitch of its own. And we're just expected to like go about life as if there's not a hurricane happening within us. I'm just listening. <laughs> That's the flow I'm telling you what to do this week. <laughs> I'm tapped in. Yeah, clued yeah. into it. Mm -hmm. But it's true. I feel like, I don't know. You should, don't know. I don't know. It, just, it should be on men to learn more about the women's cycle. That's what I think. That's my conclusion. Yeah, I just think it's weird that there are so many things in the world that are optimized for men that don't really even work for women but we don't really think twice about it that part speak on it like the work schedule mm -hmm. preach you you can't really have a consistent week-to-week -week work schedule if it's optimized for your period exactly it is optimized i mean the patriarchy hello it is optimized <laughs> for the man the nine to five five days a week everything the same for the whole month that's not optimized for women Mm -hmm. even like just the the morning aspect of it we're more t turned on clued in in the afternoon and nighttime mm -hmm. so this whole nine to five thing doesn't work for us either but we're just expected to abide by it it's just mind-boggling i feel like i deserve at least three days off if i'm on my period if you could devise the perfect schedule mm -hmm. for an entire month mm -hmm. for a woman what would it look like okay week of my period i'm on a beach not to be messed with for the entire okay. week. Or I'm curled up in a ball inside my house. Everything is dark. Okay? okay. After that, the next two weeks, I would say, I am a busy bee. I am going at it. I am working nonstop, but more afternoon to nighttime. Morning, morning I'm just chilling, mm. right? And then the week before my period, I'll still work, but I must work alone. No one is to come near me. No one is to talk to me. I will do all of my work and get it done snappy <laughs> by myself. <laughs> and that is for others' safety more than my own. I think we just realized why we don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> no business can do this. <laughs> I mean, it's a little exaggerated, but I do think there are definitely ways that it could be more optimized to yeah. a woman. That's fair. Yeah. I guess boys. And I think you are creating the new standard for boyfriends and dads everywhere. <laughs> Learn your woman's cycles. Don't be rude about it. Ask them if they actually want you to know that information. Okay, wait. So you just said something that I'm a little confused on. Mm -hmm. As a woman, would you have wanted your dad to be involved with your period? I don't know that I would have wanted him to be involved, but I think him knowing kind of like the ins and out of a woman's cycle could have helped him from a lot of co confusion in my teenage years. Like, mm -hmm. oh, maybe she's not a maniac. Maybe she's just a teenager who's going through PMS for one of the first times and her brain is making her go cuckoo. Mm -hmm. That's helpful information. He didn't have to actually talk to me about it, but he, if he knew about it, that's helpful. So if I am to be the father of a daughter in the future, mm -hmm. what should I do when she has her first period? First off, learn how to use a tampon. What do you mean and why? <laughs> well, first ask her if she wants you to help or me to help because she might just not want to come to you for that first period. Probably not. But if she is open to that, because hopefully you guys have a really close relationship, then you should know how to tell her. Especially if I'm not there. 
I should be able to tell her how to put her tampon in? Yeah, you should be able to help her. What if I'm not there and then she's just freaking out panicking because she doesn't know how to put a tampon in? That's what YouTube is for. Because a lot of people want to search how to put a tampon in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess leave that part to me. <laughs> but I think in general, always be packing tampons in your car. Maybe pack an extra pair of shorts in the car in case accidents happen because... Trust me, they do. <laughs> okay. And just be, I don't know, knowledgeable about it. Don't make it a taboo subject. It's fair. Got some good points. Yeah. Yeah. I think tampons and pads should be everywhere for free. Am I going too crazy here? Who's funding that? Your tax dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that, that brings me to something, too. Do you wish that you could pick where your tax dollars go? Personally, I do. On a global scale, I understand why that probably wouldn't work. Yeah. I'm not putting my money towards the army, even though I probably should. <laughs> You're not putting any money towards the army? We, well, some, but we put too much, I think, to the army. Oh, boy. <laughs> Don't come for her. <laughs> I want more in, like, tampons for women. <laughs> <laughs> tampons for all. All right, well, that's episode six. We are a month and a half in. Longer than most of my relationship before you. <laughs> but again, just want to, if you did enjoy, what you laughing at? I'm trying to round this out. <laughs> I just feel like we're, we're so desperate. Please like us. <laughs> if you did enjoy this mm -hmm. and you're on a podcasting flat platform, please give us five stars. And a if, review. And a review. I want words. <laughs> Put in some effort. Tell us all the things. I'm kidding. If you want to. <laughs> um, and then on, if you're on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. Turn on notifications. Comment. We like having conversations with, with you guys down in the comments. Yeah. And if you got any other things to add to what we talked about today, throw them out there. We love to hear it. Yeah. And if you have any suggestions for next week's podcast, we'd love to hear them. Topics you want to talk about. Yeah. But in the meantime, have a great week. We're out of here. All right.